Just 60 years ago, South Korea was one of the poorest countries in the world. Now they are a global economic leader with a GDP of 1.81 trillion and a GDP per capita at just under $35,000. So what happened in these 60 years that turned South Korea into a global economic leader? North and South Korea started off pretty much the same. In fact, some would even argue that South Korea had fewer natural resources than North Korea in the past. But the decisions the leaders of these countries made after World War II shaped their futures differently. For one, North Korea adopted a socialist communist regime, while South Korea adopted democracy and capitalism. And in the words of Milton Friedman, everywhere you have freedom, you have capitalism. That's not to say that capitalism is a prerequisite for freedom and wealth, but it's nonetheless there. Pitting the growth of the South Korean economy to a single factor, in this case, capitalism would be one-sided. And we wouldn't be looking to answer this question seriously enough. This is why we will try to answer this question from all possible angles. First off, let's start with the history of South Korea at the start of the Korean War. Korea was split into two halves, the top and the bottom, or the north and the south. At the end of the war, the split was final, two million people were killed, and North Korea had all of the industry, while South Korea was an agricultural society. South Korea was still in a horrible position, people were living in poverty. They were on the brink of starvation, and they organized a coup d'etat. This is when the first South Korean dictator came to power. You heard that right, the first South Korean dictator. In the span of 27 years, South Korea went through three different dictators. But despite this, South Korea has always known how to tackle the problem of corruption. While most democratic nations struggle to fix corruption, South Korea does it through smashing that like button just like you should do if you haven't done so already. But no, in all seriousness, they do it through peaceful protests. Recently, they removed a president from office in this exact way. <laughs> However, during the dictatorships, the South Korean system was established, and it wasn't what you would generally call a free market. In a free market society, you first make the laws and then you have the businesses abide by those laws no matter what. That's not what happened in South Korea. Park Chun-hee met up with the heads of all the major corporations and businesses at the time in South Korea and asked them what they wanted. He didn't care about the law, he wanted businesses to flourish, so he was willing to look the other way if Samsung couldn't pay its taxes in a given year. Agricultural reforms were adopted by the country and today, they hold the fifth spot in agriculture innovation. Because they had a vast population to feed and not enough land to plant the crops, they needed to develop crops with greater yields while requiring less fertilizer and water to grow. This led to the country having so much rice, vegetables, and fruit that they began exporting it to other nations. They also realized that the country would need major infrastructure reforms if they are to turn South Korea into a wealthy country. So after Park Chen hee assumed power, he started creating power. That's right, they began building power plants that would meet the growing demand of the businesses and the workforce. The government also expanded roads and built highways so transportation became easier and easier. On top of that, Park Chen hee adopted international trade and didn't put unnecessary taxes on the government, plus he gave people incentives to save and then invest their money. The freeing of international trade meant that companies like Hyundai and Samsung got to compete with car manufacturers from the USA and Japan. If they couldn't cope with the competition, they didn't need to worry. The government was there to step in and lend a helping hand. But they didn't do this with all companies. You see, the government wasn't stupid. They were willing to support big businesses only if big businesses were willing to employ a huge chunk of the South Korean workforce. This idea meant one thing, they would primarily be supporting manufacturing businesses. So what happened to these major companies that got the support from the government? Well, first of all, this is where the concept of cue ball comes into play. A cue ball is an ultra-large business, a super conglomerate. So if you're working for Samsung, this company didn't manufacture just your electronic devices, buddy. They were everywhere. We're not kidding, we really mean everywhere. If you're a worker for Samsung, your house is built by a construction company owned by Samsung, your TV came from Samsung, and the Renault cars are manufactured by Samsung. Samsung also sells that man his car insurance. They even have amusement parks that you can go to with your family on the weekends. And Samsung is just one of these kibbles in South Korea. Over time, their number has increased and now there are hundreds of them. LG, the company that's making phones and TVs, is also the distributor of Coca-Cola in South Korea. So when you watch the game and you're drinking a Coke, you're making money twice. So how do all of these keyballs stay competitive in the global marketplace? Well, for starters, they smash that subscribe button, just like you should do if you haven't done so already. 
But no, seriously now, the first thing they have is one of the best educational systems in the world. They know Samsung, LG, Hyundai, and these other companies will need competent and smart workers to push the boundaries, so schools do everything in their power to supply them with the necessary workforce. If they don't, then the company could fall, and hundreds of thousands of people would be out of business. So the schools create mathematical with kids that are smart and obedient. This is another thing the education system in South Korea does flawlessly. They create obedient workers whose respect for authority is almost like their religion. It's not uncommon to have people whose dream is to have a high-ranking position at Samsung, lives a comfortable life, and never needs to start a business. But where is the growing disparity between the rich and the poor in South Korea? Don't they have social inequality? This is where the Sanmol Ondong project comes into place. You see, Park Chang-hee knew that the rural areas, the villages of South Korea wouldn't be developing at the same pace as the quickly industrializing city centers, so they started promoting the notion of self-governance and cooperation within the communities. This idea of collaboration and self-help was crucial during the beginning phases of the nation. Young children were taught to cooperate at school, even though the movement died with the assassination of Park Chang-hee, his ideas lived on. However, while this economic model might have worked in the past, it doesn't seem like it will continue to work in the future. South Korea is facing its fair share of problems. The first one would have to be the second high suits in the entire world, and it's all due to the high stress placed on students to get into good schools. Education is important, but when you have 9,828 young people taking their lives every year, a number that is growing every year, by the way, then you have a serious problem on your hands. To make matters worse, the country needs business innovation to keep the big corporation on their toes, if young people are not willing to start businesses and go for a safe and secure job with a lot of benefits, then they are promoting laziness for corporations. In other words, why should Samsung innovate when they have no one to take them down? Despite this class struggle, South Korea is knowingly or unknowingly fixing its problems by sending a huge chunk of their students abroad. The academics that return come with a different perspective. Their entrepreneurial spirit is ignited and they are looking for ways to create business innovation to change the status quo and to push the country forward. See you in the next video.